All right, Zoe, come on up here. This is Zoe Rundle. She's amazing. Hey, guys. Tom asked me to share my story and share my testimony tonight, so that's what I'm going to do. Um, it starts off, a little bit of backstory, when I was four years old, my dad was diagnosed with lymphoma cancer for the second time, um, and it got to the point of where he had to have life sucked out of him and then put back in so that he could keep living, um, and so we had just moved to inner city LA then, and I remember living in inner city LA and all this stuff going on and uh, just being completely terrified because, like, I didn't know who I was because we had just moved and I was four and five years old, but I had like so much maturity because of all the stuff that was going on. Um, and so from that moment on my whole entire life, a part of me in the back of my head had always believed this is my fault. And every single step of the way of my life, I'd always believed that was my fault, that was my fault, that was my fault. And so that put this little seed inside of my head saying um, that I'm not worth it, that I'm not enough, that because of this, like this is all my fault. And so I can't live being worth it and being enough because of this. So fast forward like seven years later, we moved from inner city LA doing mission work there to Reading. Um, and I'm trying to fit in, going to BCS. It's a great school, um, but I can't quite find my place. And I'm trying to figure out like, what is this? And I just don't feel comfortable. And I figure out that it's because there's so much like heart to heart stuff that I'm just not prepared for it. Um, and I just can't function because of this thing inside of me that was always telling me you're not worth it and you're not enough. And because of this filter that I'd put on every single thing in my life, I wasn't able to function. And so my sixth grade year, I was just like completely lost trying to figure this out. And it was my seventh grade year that I started cutting myself because I was so depressed and so lost. Um, and I didn't know who I was. And I just didn't have a strong enough community around me to boost me into like further life at that time because I didn't know who I was, so I didn't know how to surround myself with people who knew who they were. Um, and so it was when I figured that out and I got to the point of like, I can't do this anymore. Like everything inside of me literally is like screeching away from this. Like I can't have this anymore, but I didn't know what else to do because it was, it was almost like a war within myself because I needed it to keep me going and I needed it to tell me like, to take away this pain that I was feeling emotionally. But then at the same time, I just couldn't anymore. Um, and so I went to youth camp that year. Um, and this was two years ago, two years ago at youth camp. Um, and on, I think it was the third night, I went up and there was prayer about um, how, it was like something like if you need prayer for breakthrough of any sort. And I was like, well, yeah, I need this. So I went up and I found a youth leader and I wasn't even quite sure what was like, what the root of it was then. Um, and so I told her like, this is what, she didn't know that I had been cutting or anything of that. I didn't tell her any of that. I just told her like, I feel worthless. I feel like I'm not enough and I don't know what to do with myself like any of the time. Um, and she was like, so like, what happened? When did you start feeling this way? And I thought back and I was like, I actually have no idea. Like this has just been my life. Um, and then I remembered, like, well, this happened. And so she was like, okay, and started praying for me. And I was like, this is great, didn't really feel anything. And then went back to my chair and worship was still going. And all of a sudden, like, fell into this trance of an encounter um, where God pushed my dad up to me in a wheelchair. And Jesus, Father God Jesus was standing behind him. And my dad stood up. And I always say that my dad and Jesus look alike. And it's true because they really do. Like, my dad's eyes and Jesus' eyes are, like, the same thing. And so it was almost like seeing the same person pushing them. It was weird. But anyways, my dad pushes, or God pushes my dad up. My dad gets up out of his chair, walks over to me, um, stands next to me, and rips off his shirt. And across his chest in, like, blue paint, like someone had just came and painted it on, it said strong. Um... And he just like stood there looking at me and I had no idea what it meant. And I just started crying because it was almost like I felt like I had to be strong for my dad and I had to be strong for my mom and I had to be strong for my brother. And there was just no room for me to be strong for myself. Um, it, it was when I realized that, that Papa God Jesus came over to me and stood behind me and started whispering into my ear, you're worth it, you're enough, you're worth it, you're enough. Um, and I still didn't believe it. But I had 
that thing fighting with the seed that had been put in the back of my mind. And they fought and they fought and they fought until I didn't know what to believe, which was a step towards the right direction. And then it got to the point of where I could be able to start believing I'm worth it, I am enough. And then later that summer, same summer, I went to a youth exchange for the missionary group that my family is a part of. And these are like the kids that I've grown up with my whole entire life. It's like the one place where I feel myself like fully. There's nothing like that's not me about it. So I go into this community and it's like, haha, the theme for this week is story. And I'm like, no, this cannot be the theme. Like I've dreaded my story. I've never talked about it. Like people, like when people ask, I'm just like, oh yeah, I lived in LA. Like that's great. Um, but never talked about it. And it was something that I was absolutely terrified of. So we go the whole week talking about Bible characters, about their stories, how it reflects to our own lives and like the youth leaders' stories and how God helped them in their like lives. And then the last afternoon, they're like, surprise, like you guys get to share your story with the group. Um, And so they give us two hours to just like be with God and decide how are we gonna share our story. Um, And there were tons of creative ideas that people had. And I was like, fighting with God. I was, God, I don't want to do this. And he was like, You're, you need to do this. Like, this is your breakthrough. Um, and I was like, no. And so I sat down and put on worship music in my room and just wrote out like five pages of everything that I, like my whole entire story. Um, and that night I was one of the last people to share and it got to me and I shared everything, just like poured out my whole entire story and my whole entire heart to these people that had watched me grow throughout the whole time. Um, and they just listened. And then at the end of it, I felt so free. And I was just like, nothing, nothing was the same from that point on. And then that night I was in the shower and I looked down and all of the scars off of my legs had disappeared except for one. And it was from that point on where I was like, there's no doubt in my mind that God is real, that there is a God and that he lives inside of me and that he's taken away the lies of that I'm not enough and that I'm not worth it. And he's taking them from anyone else in this room or anywhere that's feeling them too. And all you have to do is step into the promises that he has and step in to like the realization of this is my story. This is who I am. Like, this is me. And then he takes away all the worthness, worthlessness and all of the feelings that you're not enough. And so over that next year, it was a ginormous process of me beginning to believe I am worth it. I am enough. And so I can stand here today and say that I know that I am a worthy daughter of the King. Oh